Welcome to Greenville Update 1.20. Quite honestly, gotta be one of my favorite Greenville updates yet. This update packs some much appreciated and highly anticipated additions and, of course, an amazing selection of new vehicles. At least for me. First thing to note off, winter is now... more wintry? I really like the addition of the snow on the roads. I feel like it really just gives it the touch it needed. To be honest, last update I really wasn't all that excited for winter itself in game. Something just felt missing from it. It didn't really give me that winter wonderland unique spark to it that GB winters usually have, but this definitely fixes that problem. Sadly though, winter's leaving in a few weeks, so we've gotta enjoy it while we still can. Now next up is a highly anticipated feature. DOT, Department of Transportation, has finally arrived, a part of the Public Services Previously Emergency Services Game Pass. Wisconsin Department of Transportation, give assistance to customers around the roadways and make sure traffic flows smoothly. Join the job and it teleports you to the new DOT building. Pretty basic looking building from the outside, located near the Metro PD station, visitor sports grill, the farmhouse, all that. Coming up front you've got a Lincoln Aviator right here, some benches, Inside you're greeted with a reception room. They really do like their uh, computer monitors here. Back area of this place is basically a normal hallway. This door leads to the reception room. Here's an office area that looks out into the parking lot. Not really sure what this is, but uh, looks neat. Another hallway, eating area, office. All of their favorite cars they've repoed. Probably. More offices. Bathrooms. An exit. And the garage area. Looks fairly similar to Truck Planet. A lot of the same items in here, like the spray bottles over there. There's also an American flag over here, the DOT flag, and the Wisconsin flag. Plus a lift. Actually a pretty nice building because it's so generic feeling. Kind of adds to the realism. I definitely roleplay here. Another big feature for the DOT team, the tools. You've got some normal ones like the flares, road signs, cones, a drill, and a flashlight, but there's also a new tablet tool that you can view traffic cameras through. Just click the cams button while holding the tablet and it'll activate. There's currently three different intersections you can view, but there's multiple camera angles of each. The D-Render system kind of messes with what you can view from these cameras, so that's why you may not be able to see certain buildings loading in, but nonetheless it's a nice feature to have. Probably going to be pretty helpful to roleplay server staff, and police. Alright, now for vehicles on the DOT team. This DOT F-150, been seen in some construction special roleplays before. Nice for roleplays, but, of course, what everyone's actually excited about, the tow truck itself. This tow truck has two trims, the DOT trim and a regular flatbed for other businesses or something, and $2,000 less. Here's how the tow truck looks up close. It appears it's been highly refreshed with a ton of detail, probably since a lot of people are going to be using this. When you come over to this area for the tow controls, a button pops up and you have to be on the DOT team to use it. Press it to open the tow controls and it gives you three options, up, down, and tow. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's put the flatbed down as a pretty realistic animation. Putting the bed down reveals a pretty detailed chassis of the truck, even down to the rivets on the frame. Click the tow button and it'll give you the tow tool in your inventory, along with a little notification at the top of your screen telling you how to use it. Click on a small vehicle near the tow truck to tow it. Simply hover your cursor over a vehicle. If it's red, that means it cannot be towed. If it's green, click it and it'll give the person who owns the car a notification asking if they want to allow the tow. If they accept, the car will teleport right onto the flatbed. Just put the bed back up and you're good to go. Pretty much same goes for releasing the car, except you don't need the owner's permission. 
and you have to be at a stop. So sadly, no, you cannot be going 70 and flinging a car off the bed into traffic. As for the tow truck itself, here's how it sounds. And here's how the lights look. There's a lot of them. Really makes it stand out quite a bit. Emergency lights. Awesome feature, definitely going to be and already has been super helpful for role plays and making the game more interactive. Next big change, a completely overhauled Burger King, or uh, Burger Knight. There's a more spacious feeling parking lot similar to how the recent Cenex remodel was, more truck stop-esque I feel like, there's a redone drive through right here, and the building itself is fairly similar to how it was before. Same general layout, snacks and whatnot over here on the shell side, a vending machine with the GV3 Model X on top of it, specifically the version just about seemingly every Model X owner complained about at one point or another, some freezers, restrooms over here, more chips, and on the Burger King side, just a bunch of seating, a soda machine, a few TVs, and of course the kitchen and area where you can actually order food. Yes, there is an interactive job, similar to McDonald's. For sure a nice upgrade considering the old Burger King was around since I believe at least GV2, so roughly 5 actual years. The old one wasn't bad though, I think it aged a lot better than a lot of the old buildings. Another big feature for this update is the new police CAD system. Go on any of the three police teams, Wisconsin State Patrol, Outagami Sheriff, or Metro PD and press the left control button on your keyboard and it'll pop up. Wrong thing. Pretty nice UI, State of Wisconsin Police Database, powered by the Wisconsin State Patrol. All you've got to do to access it now is put in your username. It's case sensitive so you need to put your exact username. And put in your call sign, just make one up if you're not sure, it can be anything with four digits. Once you enter everything, hit the go button. It'll say welcome, have a little delay, and load up the actual CAD page. The user selection part of the database will list every player in the server and their player ID. Say you pulled someone over and you need to check on them to see if they're wanted or whatever. Just find them here. Once you find them, you can click on their name and it'll bring up all the details you need to know for a roleplay scenario, like their height, age, account age and reality, and if they're wanted or not, along with their character's image popping up right above your info on the bottom right. Pretty cool feature for cops, actually. Nice roleplay enhancement. Wonder if anything else is planned for the CAD in the future. Alright, and last major change I'll be covering in depth. Interactive jobs have finally been fixed and also updated a bit as well. Most of you probably know that when interactive jobs were first implemented, they were pretty buggy. I forgot exactly what the issues were, but I think some of them were NPCs sometimes not spawning, occasionally not despawning, sometimes actual players' orders wouldn't go through, and sometimes interactive jobs would just completely quit working for the rest of the server. Now, it appears that all those issues were resolved, and also, the jobs were slightly simplified. Now there's actually little pads that are lit up so you can see the area you're supposed to stand and work in. drive through support for interactive jobs have been added as well, just for the McDonald's and Burger King jobs. Now as for the bulk job, when NPCs give you their items, no longer do you have to move the items fully manually. Instead, you just press E to do it in two simple stages, scan and bag. I personally like putting it into the bag myself, but I still think it's an overall upgrade to the job to make it easier for more players. One thing that seems to have not changed though is the change system, which, though I actually kind of like myself, I think it's probably a bit more complex than most players want to deal with, especially if interactive jobs are meant to become more of like a core part of the game's economy in the future. In my opinion, lower change amounts and slash or more rounded change numbers can improve this though. Alright, now for miscellaneous changes and updates. Let's start off with a real good one. There's now a manual ragdoll button. Now, maybe this explains why I was falling over for a bunch of scenes. Ever since character ragdolls were added to the game, I've been wanting this and, uh, yeah, here it is. Just press R and your character will ragdoll. No longer do I have a use for playing random ragdoll games for fun. You now breathe, yeah. Due to the colder temperatures, you can now see light vapor coming from your mouth slash nose area every few seconds. Quick Dollar now has an interactive job, complete with a few different items from bulk food store, including some interesting ones for, sure. There's an updated fuel fill up menu, a lot more detailed now than the previous one. This shows exactly how much fuel you have, the cost per gallon, the amount of gallons you're buying, and how much you'll be paying because yes, you now actually have to pay for fuel again, er, well, did for a small period of time, but it's since been temporarily removed due to a critical issue. If you press the hold to fill button, there's now sounds, and you can see all the numbers go up as it fills. I really like this improvement, it brings a lot more realism to filling up, and also you can actually control the specific amount you fill up now, compared to previously where you only had the fill to full option, or in GV3 when you had just that and the fill to half option. 
Another thing that was added was, wait, hold on a second. What a piece of junk. Get off my lawn. All right, well, let me utilize the new house banning system. There we go. Pretty helpful in a lot of cases, but I hope it doesn't get abused in role play scenarios. If you flip your vehicle. Uh. Uh. Am I stopped yet? Oh my gosh. All right, well, what I was trying to demonstrate was that if you flip your vehicle, your exhaust smoke turns a bluish gray, and it smokes quite a bit more than usual. The Audi RS6 received a new 3D grill mesh and new sounds. They finally fixed the new car sorting in the dealership when you use the sort filters, then uncheck the filters, and the new cars weren't shown at the top again without rejoining the game. That is so helpful. And speaking of dealership sort filters, there's a new no pass filter right here. Dealership music was changed back to the spring themes along with at least one new one in the dealership, I think. The previously Top Dog Printing prop building was renamed in game as the real life building's name changed, I think right after the building was added in the game. And some bugs were smashed with the fly swatter. I mean, fixed. Alright, now for usually a lot of people's favorite thing in updates, vehiculars. This update has no shortage of them, and especially for me, no shortage of good ones either. Many very highly anticipated vehicles for me in this update, including my most wanted vehicle in game for quite some time now. This is a very nice dealership home screen to look at. Okay, let's speed around some of the vehicles in the dealership. We've got the 2005 Lexus IS, completely remodeled, along with the new 2008 Lexus IS, including the ISF. The 2007 Volkswagen Golf W12, a crazy concept car for a quarter million dollars in game. The 2015 Ferrari 458 was remodeled and includes two new trims. The 2016 Ford Explorer and all of its emergency services counterparts are remodeled as well. The 2016 Cadillac ELR was added, basically a Cadillac Chevy Volt. The 2017 Hyundai Sonata, a bunch of new emergency services variants of the 2019 Fusion from last update. The 2020 Cadillac Escalade and Escalade ESV included in that. The 2020 Rolls Royce Wraith and the 2021 Rolls Royce Phantom. I still have memories of seeing a Phantom like that rolling around in GV3 as a slot car back when it was new. Pretty neat to see. New Audi A4, A4 Allroad, S4, and RS4. The 2021 Chrysler 300 is remodeled. The new Ford Ranger, Mazda 6 and 3, Toyota Venza and Prius, BMW X7, Lexus NX, Infiniti QX80, Subaru Outback, Hyundai Santa Fe, and the Fisker Ocean. Alright, now for some in-depth reviews. Oh man, we got some good ones. Let's start it off right with the 1992 Chevy CK, the most bought vehicle in the entire game with 3 million sales on one trim alone. This is a starter truck pretty much. Now, this wasn't my most wanted vehicle in GV. It's definitely up there, but I think it's Silas's most wanted, or at least the one he's talked the most about wanting. Things got a bunch of trims, the single cab long bed two wheel drive, the 2500 extended cab step side, the 2500 crew cab long bed, the 1500 extended cab step side, the four wheel drive extended cab long bed half ton, the 2500 single cab long bed, the 3500 crew cab dually, and the 2500 extended cab long bed. All the 2500s and 3500s have the 6.5 liter Detroit diesel engine. This one right here is I think the only one with the 350 V8, and the two wheel drive 1500s are V6s. In addition to the refreshes, the new in terms of the normal CK, we also got the 454 SS finally, along with a fictional 454 SS Blazer. Oh yeah, and the regular Blazer, Tahoe, and Suburbans complete with a bunch of trims as well. Take a look at the before and after this thing, the single cab long bed trim to be specific.
Next up is another highly wanted vehicle of mine, a remodel of the 2003 GMC Savannah, plus, of course, a bunch of new trims. The 1500 LS Cargo, the 2500 LT Passenger, the 1500 LS Cargo EXT, the 2500 LT Cargo, and the 1500 LS Passenger EXT. The remodel also includes the Chevy Express and the remodeled police van and ambulance. The old model was a bit stubby looking. It just kind of looked odd for a while and had some suspension issues, so I never really drove it. If it wasn't for that, I was actually planning to buy one on revamp release in the RP series as a daily. Let me show you what I mean about the old model. Here's a comparison of the new one to the old one. The 2005 Infiniti G35 was remodeled and was split into two different versions, the 2004 and the 2006. Along with this comes new trims, the base and the premium with aero package. Here's a comparison of the old one to the new one. Ah yes, the time has finally come. My most wanted vehicle in GV ever since the Duramax was re-added, so for over a year now, is here. The 2005 Ford Excursion. And it's $350,000! I mean, the Excursion market is pretty hot, but not that hot. Oh, wrong one. Uh, oh, okay, here it is. Probably the coolest SUV ever mass produced. You know I like something when I like every single trim. Every trim on this thing is good. There's three engine options, all of which have accurate and nice sounding engine notes. The 5.4 liter V8, the 6.8 liter V10, and of course, the mighty 6.0 power stroke diesel. To some people, the worst diesel ever, others, not so much. I gotta tell you though, I'm glad they put the 6.0 in game over the 99-03 with the 7.3. I like both, but the 6.0 just sounds amazing. Plus, there's that facelift front end too. Alright, alright, for the trims, we've got the XLS with the 5.4 V8, the XLT with the V10, the fictional Harley Davidson edition with the 6 liter power stroke diesel. The Edison Eddie Bauer in Real Life V10 trim. The Limited with a 6.0 diesel. The XLT with a 6.0 diesel. All XLTs are rear wheel drive, by the way. The XLT 5.4 liter V8. And the Eddie Bauer 6.0 diesel. Here are the specs on each engine 5.4 liter V8 puts out 300 horsepower in game. V10 puts out 330 horsepower. And it says the 6.0 diesel puts out 270 horsepower, but that's inaccurate since I could be wrong, but. I'm pretty sure the specs tab doesn't pick up any added horsepower from forced induction, the added power from the turbo. That's most likely why you see a lot of inaccurate numbers in the specs tab for a lot of forced induction vehicles. Here's how the Harley Edition and XLT look up close. This one's got the billet grille, the blacked out Harley headlights, the tow mirrors over here, the van taillights, the split tailgate. Such cool looking trucks. Literally the nicest excursion model I think I've ever seen. There's really no other good excursion 3D models anywhere. They all look oddly proportioned or have the wrong front end or they're just flat out not appealing models. This one's really really nice however. Just look at the details on the grill. Now to hear it. The 6.0 that is. This is something I was a bit concerned on because for me the sound is a big piece of the puzzle. This truck doesn't just sound good though. It sounds way better than I was expecting. Legitimately better than any 6.0 I've heard in a game regardless of literally anything. Just, just take a listen. 
already sounds good, but when you rev it... It's got a pretty throaty 6-0 sound. And to top all that off, take a listen to this turbo whistle. It's amazing. The other engines don't sound half bad either. They're also super good and realistic sounding. Here's the 5.4. And here's the V10. Bluezilla did an outstanding job on all these sounds. Genuinely super impressed by them. And of course, LG Splash on the 6.0 turbo sounds. Here's a 0 to 100 in braking test on the 6.0 XLT trim. This one's rear wheel drive. Definitely not the best brake, so I mean, hey, what do you expect from a massive, massive SUV? And there's this thing, a 6.0 Power Stroke Excursion Limo for $350,000. What a sight. What a sight. <laughs> Plus, here's the race between the V10 and 6.0 because, uh, why the heck not? Both traction control off and an automatic in sport mode. Next up, we've got the 2006 Mini Cooper remodel. The S, Checkmate, Monte Carlo, S Convertible, and JWC. Here's a little before and after. Next is the 2006 Lexus GX470. This has two trims, the base and the sport. Here are the specs, base specs, and sport specs. And here's how the sport trim looks up close. Here's how it sounds. lights and 0 to 100 in braking test All right, another cool car we got is the 2021 Audi TT. We got the Coupe, RS Coupe, and RS Convertible versions. Some more Audis for all of the uh, amazing Audi drivers out there. The RS Roadster comes in one trim, the RS Black Optic. Here are the specs. Here's how the RS Roadster looks up close. Convertible, obviously. Here's how it sounds. Oh, here's the interior, by the way. Really detailed. Same 
same sounds as RS3, I believe. Lights. Sequentials. Zero to 100 in braking test. Next up is a supercar anticipated by many, and to be honest, I'm pretty stoked for this one as well, the 2021 Lamborghini Huracan STO. The STOs are just new trims for the existing 2021 Huracan for anyone wondering. There's four STO trims, the normal STO, the contrast pack, so a little bit of yellow two-tone, black plus contrast pack, basically just the orange two-tone version, and the black pack, the normal one with a bit more black accenting, the one I got. Here it is, basically a race car for the street, or so people say. One way or another, it looks crazy. I didn't really like the STO at first, but seeing models without the two-tone made me like it way more. Here's how it sounds. Same as a normal hair cone, but. Zero to 100 and braking test. And finally, the last vehicle to review in this update, the 2022 Land Rover Defender. A very popular vehicle right now in real life, and I can already picture these being extremely popular in RP servers. I think it's time for everybody to go trade in their GLEs. There's two versions of this thing, the two-door models and the four-door models, both of which have similar trims. Here are all the trims on the four-door. Here's how the preserver trim looks up close, pretty utilitarian looking. And here's how it sounds. Lights. Zero to hundred and braking test. And with that, this update review is complete. Once again, this is for sure up there in my favorite updates. The snow on the roads was just such a nice touch that I think winter really needed this year. The excursion is here and lived up to pretty much all of my hopes for it and then some. The tow truck has been highly anticipated by many for literal years. And of course, we got the manual ragdoll button I've been wanting too. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this update as much as I did. If you want, let me know your favorite part of this update down in the comments. See ya.